So this is the episode where basically the B team of the Z fighters confronts Frieza's army as soon as they touch down and all come out of their spaceship and fight all of his Frieza soldiers. So, hmm, the first thing I want to say about this is that overall the movie did it way better for the most part. The problem I had with this is that you actually don't see a whole lot of fighting in this episode. The movie had some pretty awesome sequences where you see, like, each fighter kind of gets to shine for a little bit. Like, you see Krillin doing stuff, and there's a scene with Master Roshi, and then Krillin, and Gohan, and Piccolo. In this one, you see a lot of close-ups of characters' faces talking, like Frieza, while you hear all the fighting going going on in the background. So, like, there were a couple of scenes where we see a few punches thrown, but for the most part, it was kind of cheapened, where you see just, like, still images of the Frieza soldier standing around in the background while you see all those little shockwave explosions everywhere. And then we just see Frieza talking while we hear everybody fighting and grunting in the background. So, yeah, there actually wasn't a whole lot of action in this episode, and the action that was in it wasn't that great. So, yeah, the movie was way better. We also learned that sometime during Frieza's training, he also learned how to count and keep track of time, because we see him accurately count up to ten when he's waiting for Goku. Like, oh my god. There were a few uh, interesting differences between the movie and the anime. First of all, something I'm glad that they touched on, which... Um, it's something I brought up in the previous video is that they actually mentioned something about Majin Buu. Now, um, I said that I'm glad that they said something, but on the flip side, the reasoning that they gave was pretty stupid, so I'm almost not glad that they included this. But they said that the reason Majin Buu isn't there is because he's asleep and nobody can wake him up. That's like. A really bad plot device as an excuse to give characters um, some more screen time like the the more useless minor characters some more screen time like Tian and Krillin and Roshi and all them you know a much better reason would have been yeah we don't want him to fight because he might get angry and blow everyone up again or something or get out of control or Mr. Satan said he doesn't want him to fight or whatever but anyways that was stupid they might as well have just left out that part because that reasoning doesn't make any sense like since when has boo been that deep of a sleeper that you can't wake him up just like shake him or like make food i'm sure he'll pop right back up anyways uh and then they they mentioned goten and trunks again just like they did in the movie uh, the reasoning for that is stupid they just say, Go Trunks and Goten can get reckless. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Okay. I don't have anything more to say about that. It's like, reckless. Well, you did kind of like... Didn't Goku, their savior, kind of entrust them to save the world from Majin Buu at one point? You know, during that whole fusion saga and everything? And everyone else on the lookout seemed to put their faith into them. Even though, you know, Gotenks was cocky as hell and messed everything up and kind of let everyone else get eaten but I don't know I think they could have used him in this um but the thing is I'm skipping ahead a little bit in the next episode Gotenks actually does join the battle so that's another difference we see in the preview he's going to be headbutting someone in the dick it looks like hopefully he goes Super Saiyan 3 and we see a kamikaze ghost or some other cool crazy attacks of his. Other differences. Like I just have a few things to nitpick at and point out the differences. And that's what this video is going to be about. So Roshi broke his stick against a guy by swinging it at him. As opposed to blowing it up himself and disintegrating it in the movie. So that's a difference. Something else I'm wondering that uh, remained constant between the anime and the movie is why didn't Gohan turn Super Saiyan throughout, like, you know, the entire battle? Maybe that's because he 
didn't want to hurt the guys too much and thought he'd kill them if he hit them as a Super Saiyan, maybe. But I don't know. Isn't Gohan kind of weak at this point? Like, I, I think that Piccolo is actually stronger than Gohan at this point, really. Because Gohan's, like, his base form is detrained as hell at this point, and he can only turn Super Saiyan, or so he says. So I would actually say that Piccolo is stronger than him at this point. I don't know. Unless he went Super Saiyan 2, which he may not even be able to do that. Man, he sucks. Okay. Um. <coughs> so all, now, in this episode, all of a sudden, Frieza has a vendetta against Krillin. You know, the guy he already, like, tortured and kind of killed almost twice. Uh, yeah, so he orders all of his goons to attack Krillin, so Krillin's the main focus of the episode for, like, or f the main focus of the battle for, like, five or six minutes. We don't even get to see them do much. They just surround him in a circle, and while we see Krillin act, uh, uh, unsure of himself the entire time, and then... He suddenly gets... He, he needs Master Roshi to remind him that he actually knows how to fight. And isn't complete... Isn't as useless as he thinks he is. And then we cut to the Beerus planet and everything. And one difference that I like is that... Beerus seems to kind of get involved with Goku and Vegeta's training. Because he suggests a couple of things. And we see that he's like watching the fight and is kind of interested in it. And remarks on how they're getting stronger. Or that they're stronger than they were when they first showed up. And uh, then they get teleported to somewhere. Which kind of reminded me of the training that was going on before the Saiyans arrived. Way back when in Z. Where they're on the lookout. And they go in that time room in the uh, on the lookout. Yeah, so we don't know what's happening with that yet, but it looked like we teleported them somewhere in some portal. Um, and then something cool that happened was Krillin used that same move uh, that he used against the Cybermen on the Frieza soldiers. That thing where he shoots the beam up and it spreads everywhere and he killed like the six Cybermen or three or four of them at once, I think. Which was like the most effective that Krillin has ever been. Um, also, a um, very notable difference is that the Tagoma guy, he's still alive at this part in the show. When he got uh, in the movie, he was killed by Frieza pretty instantly. And then, another big difference is that that Shisami guy, the red guy, who looks like, what's his face? Um, Devil Boy, or whatever. What's the name of that guy? Hellboy, that's it. Yeah, so Piccolo doesn't fight that guy. And instead... <coughs> Gohan fights him instead. But this time, the Tagoma just shoots a blast through both of them. Um, to impress Frieza or something. And then it's revealed that Tagoma was actually Frieza's training partner during Frieza's training. And then we kind of see part of Frieza's training... Whoa, that's an interesting difference. All we saw was, like, Tagoma on the ground in pain while Frieza just stood there. It looked like they were training on some planet somewhere. And it's revealed that after each training session, Tagoma used their regeneration device to heal up so they could train again. So that's about all we saw of Frieza's training. But it's more than nothing, which was what we got in the movie. And, uh, yeah, so... The Tagoma shoots a blast through Shisami, killing him, and which also wounds Gohan. And in the movie, Frieza just knocked Gohan out by punching him in, you know, the solar plexus. But this time, it's because the Tagoma guy did it. Now it looks like in the episode that's coming up, Tagoma is actually going to fight everybody, and it seems like he's pretty strong because we see him kind of kicking ass. And we also see. Um, Ginyu Frog makes an appearance, and according to what I've read, um, Ginyu is actually going to be switching bodies with Tagoma, so Ginyu's going to make a comeback 
at least briefly it looks like I don't know how he's going to do that when he can't speak you know since he's a frog and everything he only managed that when Bulma made like a magical device that allows animals to talk and wrapped it around Ginyu's frog Ginyu's throat so he could speak space English and yeah so we'll see how that works and then it looks like Gotenks is gonna fight Togoma in the next episode so we'll see how that goes yep that's it